Hello there folks, I am Dan Brown from Sort of Interesting and my goodness me, as you can probably tell, you're joining me today out on the canal. We're currently walking through the basin at Ellesmere on the hunt for wild flowers, believe it or not. So this may or may not be an interesting video, but my goodness me, it's good to actually get some sensible, proper summer weather in. Right then, my friends, I just thought I'd do a very brief introduction to this video. So this is just a series of clips from two different little trips I made out uh, on beautiful days in the general Ellesmere area. So you're seeing clips from both of those and there's loads of clips that I haven't used. And well, I was amazed at some of the uh, huge amount of varieties of some common flowers that I've always just sort of assumed were broadly the same sort of thing. And also I was amazed that, well, you'll see later in this video, some of the more obvious flowers that I've seen for the last 32 years of my life and never realised that, well, uh, we'll see. It's of great embarrassment to me personally. But anyway, let's have a look at some flowers now. Okay then my friends, so we've got some sort of classic speedwells here. I just uh, very delicately bend them round. Now I'm, I'm in two minds here because there's a million types of speedwell. I'm going to say it's either slender speedwell because they're uh, flowers up on a stalk rather than something like uh, these ones that are the common field speedwell that's more mingled in with the leaves. Or and this is the one I think it might be more likely to be, Germanda Speedwell. Again, it's a, a tricky one to say, although that's not really up on the stalk as much as these are. Oh, what an adventure. <laughs> okay, so then friends, as far as I can tell, this flower over here, the orange one, is an example of orange hawkweed, which doesn't sound great, but if we call it fox and cubs, it sounds much nicer. From what I've seen on pictures looking it up, they tend to be in more of clumps of a few together rather than just one little one like this. But as far as I can tell, the flower looks identical. And uh, <laughs> let me uh, attempt the Latin, uh, Pilicella oritiaca. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> but anyway, in all seriousness, again, I'll just have a, an attempt here. I'll zoom in. And then if I put my hand behind it, hopefully that is encouraging the camera to focus in. But you can see how like the, there's the little sort of ridged, ripped edges to the outer leaves there, the petals. Absolutely beautiful little thing. And like I say, just out here on its own, surrounded by almost nothing else of any real note. Right then my friends, this is another flower, this bright yellow one that you'll see all over the place in the UK when the time is right. And uh, as you can see it is quite strikingly orange and yellow, which is what makes it stand out I suppose and makes it seem maybe even more common than it actually is. As you can see as we zoom back how it stands out well from the general greenery of the background. However, I cannot identify with certainty whether this is ragwort, what a great name, or tansy, which both have extremely similar looks. And when I just looked it up online, interestingly, it's actually, uh, the results come up showing tansy ragwort. And I'm saying tansy as in the pronunciation that pansy would have, being just a, another similar flower, basically, or a similar name and sounding flower. So it might be more tansy that it's pronounced, so forgive me with that one. But uh, humorously, one of the other names that was listed as it was Stinking Willy, which uh, I think, again, we'll move very swiftly on from. Oh, here's a little thing. I don't know if I can focus in with the camera. These are the little things that I love. Just in that tiny little gap of the trees there, you can see there's a what I call like the ghost of a tree, just that completely dead, dried up and completely bare bit of a tree left standing just amidst the living greenery there. Lovely. So my friends, we've got obviously a classic buttercup that's not quite focused up there. Now I would say that's a meadow buttercup, but interestingly you've got some very similar things here. First of all you've got the uh, sort of the longer petaled looking buttercup type things which obviously are not actually buttercups. You've got the bulbous buttercup, the creeping buttercup and then the meadow buttercup which as you can probably see all look extremely similar but based on 
this little spiky bulb uh, head, whatever it's called, before it flowers. Oh, what's the term? Um, I would say, if I first of all get that focused in so you can just see the, again, extraordinary delicate nature of just how tiny and miniature those central parts are. Extraordinary, really. But it was that spiky little, um, not yet sprouted, oh, I can't think, I cannot think what it's called. That is what gives it away, if you ask me, as being a meadow buttercup. So if you want to see something as a little sign again of the sort of hidden nature of how much is going on, really, like I was saying about the wild variety of stuff, just coming up close to see what on earth this was. And look at how many of these little creatures there are crawling all over the flowers here. Again, just this one single little piece here is absolutely teeming with life. Ooh, the magic of the hidden world around us and the absolute magic of Ellesmere. What a beautiful, beautiful place this really is. So to end this video, you're about to see some of the most Dan Brown moments that, well, you'll ever see. So firstly, you're going to see me discover the identity of one of the most obvious plants that I mentioned earlier. Uh, that I cannot believe and I'm embarrassed to say I didn't know what it was after all these years of seeing it all over the place for decades on end. Uh, then you'll see me get a little bit distracted as I was trying to record a bit to camera talking about the beautiful rural nature of where I was and the sort of classic oldie worldy Dan Brown type of moment it was. I was sat on a log with a little book identifying wildflowers overlooking the beautiful lake of Ellesmere and well as I say then I got distracted which you'll see at the very end of this video. Okay then my friends I've just had my mind absolutely blown and this is going to be another moment where people are probably going to think hang on I could you have possibly not known that. So if we, um, if we zoom in, this is a good, good example of one here. Hopefully I can focus this in on that uh, white flower there. Just to uh, put my hand at the back of it so that it will encourage the camera to focus in. So these I have seen all over the place for all of my life. And I actually associate them a little bit with the coast because of seeing them all in the playing fields up at my nan and granddad's caravan site. And uh, when I say that they're all over the place, if we stand up and I just zoom in on the towpath here, you might be able to start to pick out and see the extraordinary amount of little blue dot, uh, little white dots even all over the towpath here. And I cannot believe, and I am embarrassed to say, that it has taken me all of this time till age 32 to realise they are simply the flowers that go with clovers. One of the most common things that you'll see in almost any garden and any stretch of open ground. And my goodness me, it just has never occurred to me. And the red ones that you also see are just red clovers. <laughs> so uh, that's something that is uh, mind blowing and embarrassing for me to discover and learn. Especially as once again, when you start looking around the uh, flower heads, you can quite clearly see that they are amidst all of the clovers. All my life I've just been thinking these were random, weird, uh, sort of golf ball style flowered weeds or something. Uh, so yeah, um, well moving swiftly on I think from that. It's gone quiet as soon as I've started filming but there's a, oh, oh, oh bird. Oh. <laughs> Let's have a look. Something awesome just flew over here really low but he's, ah. Oh. I wonder if we can head him off at the pass. Oh, I've got the camera upside down. Oh, flipping echo. Don't know what bird that was. Clearly a bird of prey, but quite light and white, sort of white and maybe grey or brown on the feathers all over. Ah, oh, flipping egg. No sign as far as I can see here. Um. Ooh. No, uh, flipping egg. Okay, well that was even more of a damn brown moment than I'd anticipated. Oh, I don't know what that was, but it was, looked awesome. Something that I've never seen before. This is the sort of stuff me, uh, me mum shouts at me for after I've been doing live streams or things like that. 
where I just ditch all of my possessions and disappear off into the woods. <laughs> So thank you very much for tuning in my friends. I hope you've enjoyed this. I know it's a little bit different to my usual stuff and I'll do more if you enjoyed it and uh, well I'll probably do more if it didn't go down too well either because there's plenty to talk about. Anyway until the next time my friends please do check out my other videos, hit subscribe, press the notification bell please because then hopefully, hopefully YouTube will actually tell you when I post a new video. And well, if you want to help me out, please do consider checking out my Boat Life books available for the Kindle and also as a paperback. And well, you'll find links to that in the description along with loads of links of Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat and all that sort of stuff. If you want to see me posting random Boat Life pictures and pictures of the great outdoors, basically. Anyway, until the next time, my friends, I'll leave you with those links in the description. Have an absolutely fantastic day. Keep it interesting. Keep it boat worthy and of course my friends, farewell.